Good morning and welcome to Baldwin First United Methodist Church. My name is Doug Cheek and I am the chair of the church council. Amanda is on vacation. Um, she should be back on Tuesday of this week. So we're ho glad, hoping she had some restful times visiting her family down in Wichita. I appreciate y'all coming out again this Sunday to, uh, to this fine day. I lied to y'all last week. I told you that this was a lot like uh, Camp Glen Lake. I was wrong. Camp Glen Lake has never been this cool. Um, it is a nice, brisk morning here, and uh, this is fantastic and wonderful. And, uh, yes, I've never been this cool at that particular camp, so I apologize for that. Um, I have a sign-up sheet here if you weren't able to get signed up online so we can trace. Uh, there's some masks. There's words to the hymns today. Cat was kind enough to print some words to the hymns, so... Um, both hymns are on, on a page if you want that. There's some tomatoes here that Linda has brought, if you'd like some of those. Um, I do not believe that there are any meetings this week, but I might be wrong about that. So, missions, missions, thank you. Missions is tomorrow night. I assume it's a Zoom call, and those will know. I was also told last week that I talked so fast that the Butels missed the entire service. So I apologize for that, and I'm glad that you're here this morning, Miss Butel. Well, <laughs> nobody, you know, nobody sees this, so it's okay. <laughs> my parents and my aunts will know, and maybe my brother if he has time. But other than that, I think you're good. <laughs> Are there any other announcements? All right. Um, I will remind you that I, I forgot. I have my giving bucket here, my clear plastic giving bucket here, but you can also give online, um, and that's a great way for us to give back to the congregation. <clears throat> Hear this opening prayer. We have come to worship the living God who calls us to bear witness. Pardon me. We'll stop. That was last week's prayer. <laughs> so you got to hear it. Let's try this week's prayer. They're on the same page. I'm so sorry. This is, sorry. Two prayers. It can't hurt. Let's try this opening prayer. We've come to worship God who loved us before we were born, who knows us better than we know ourselves, who pres whose presence never leaves us and whose love for us never ceases. This is our God. Let us worship together. The opening hymn is Lift Every Voice and Sing. And again, the words are, are printed on the... Uh, Cat was kind enough to print them on paper. And um, please, Ryan, go ahead.
Amen. What a blessing we have in this church that we can hear the beautiful organ out here and that we can hear beautiful voices that have recorded for us and, and hear your voices really makes my heart warm this morning. <clears throat> the scripture this morning comes from Acts 6, 1 through 7. In those days when the number of disciples was increasing and Hele Hellenistic Jews among them complained against the Hebraic Jews because their widows were being overlooked in the daily distribution of food. So the twelve gathered all the disciples together and said, It would not be right for us to neglect the ministry of the word of God in order to wait on tables. Brothers and sisters, choose seven men among you who are known to be full of the spirit and wisdom. We will turn this responsibility over to them and will give our attention to prayer and the ministry of the word. This proposal pleased the whole group, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit. They also Philip, Procurus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas from Antioch, a convert from Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles, who prayed and laid their hands on them. So the word of God spread, and the number of disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly, and a large number of priests became obedient to the faith. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So Jesus started with 12 disciples, and he taught them, and they had hands-on experiences with him. And then when he moved on, the work became overwhelming. And we've talked about disciples in a small class I, I attended and said the disciples were a lot like us. They weren't very bright when it came to stuff Jesus was telling them. He'd tell them once, and they go, yeah, yeah, we got it. And then they go do something else, and he go, no, no, you don't quite get it. You don't quite get it. And they were just people that he had picked up. And so when I looked at the Scripture the, this week and it said the seven, of course I thought of the Magnificent Seven. Show of hands who've seen the Magnificent Seven. That's right. All seven of you that are here today, I appreciate that. And I thought, well, what, is, what, is, what was special about these seven that, that suddenly they got called? And I started reading a little bit about, and, and again, reminding me of the Magnificent Seven. They each had a little bit of a different gift, right? Um, and so I got to thinking, well, that's kind of how disciples are made. They each have a little bit of different gifts, right? They each bring something different to the table. If you were really cool in the, in the New Testament, you got, uh, you got a name. You weren't just, you know, John. You were John the Favored. Or you were, you know, doubting Thomas. Nobody really wanted that one, you know. Uh, but it was a little bit better than Judas. Um, but they each had a separate gift. And these seven had different gifts too. Gifts that they could go into the Jerusalem and start spreading the message. And really, I think that's what it comes down to, to, to all the, the people that I have met in different churches and, and specifically here in Baldwin, the different gifts that we each one have and, and what that means for our congregation. You know, do you have a gift where you can sew and teach people a craft and help give care to uh, others? Um, not many people know, but, or maybe you do know, but uh, Linda started a, um, she started a caregiving group uh, to help those who are giving care to others. And that has been a tremendous ministry that wasn't going on at this church that has been helped not only people in this congregation, but this whole community. And in this time where, where more and more people are getting sick, that it, that's become a, a huge, a huge um, need for our community. And, and so Linda has, is a, a shining example of some discipleship that, that happens here at the church. And e each one of you here have, have specific gifts that give back to this congregation. And each person online or each person in our community, in our congregation, they have different gifts. And I think Jesus is calling us to share those gifts. 
especially in these times where where we have to help we don't have to help where we choose to help one another um that's a way that we can share our discipleship and as uh as good Methodists, you know, we we have different ways that we can can share our gifts, and we're called to do so. Um, Barb Henry was a fantastic prayer. And um, oftentimes in class, she lamented that she couldn't do as much as she used to do, but she knew one thing she could always do, and that was pray. And what a gift to have someone like her praying for us each and every day. And, and I think... Well, that's, you know, an older member of our congregation who's doing that. And then we have young disciples, um, the Blast crew. Those young people are constantly finding ways to serve this congregation and show us what discipleship looks like. And I am challenged by them to make sure that I'm doing my part to be a good disciple. Um And so we have a tremendous amount of of discipleship here in this congregation and that we share with the community. And I think that's that's important. And that's what grows a congregation, and that's what we're called to do. You know, in looking at the text, this is exactly what we're called to do is is do this discipleship. It, It be these disciples, not only for the congregation, but for our community. And and listen to to what those gifts are. Sometimes we think we have certain gifts and, and God says, no, that's, that's not really, (laughs) that's not really your gift. Um, but if we open our hearts and our minds and we listen closely, we'll, we'll find that gift. Sometimes we, we have to do things we didn't think we were going to, to do or, or be called to do. And I, I've been challenged by that as well. Um, but in accepting that service and doing that service, that's how I believe we get closer to God is 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 taking on those things and do that so as you go through this week and and i know it's a challenge because we're not regular in our building but think about how you're serving the congregation and how you might change that service in these times of covid and and what does that look like you know we have we've modified how we serve in the food pantry right we've we've modified that and that's that's a good thing so what other things are out there that we can modify you know i think sometimes this outdoor worship it's a modification but i i've liked i've enjoyed it it's it's been great we've been blessed with beautiful weather so there are things that that i know we used to do normally we can modify and 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 still reach out and reach more people and make other disciples and that's isn't that what the discipleship is all about that's what this text was all about was disciples making more disciples you know, it's like that old Perel commercial, or I might get the name wrong, but you tell two people, and you tell two people, and you tell people. That's what discipleship is all about, and that's that's telling people and getting people involved. So think about that this week as you as you go through your week, what what you can do, and and where you can and increase your discipleship for the congregation. So we're going to sing our prayer song, Lord, Listen to Your Children, from, uh, from the back side of the paper.
<clears throat> it is difficult at this moment not to be near some of the people we love and might be worried about. So let's take a moment and say out loud the names of people you wish were right here next to you at your table today. As we name them, they are present within our hearts. I have a list that we uh, are thinking about Carol and Louise, Mark, Don, Marve's mother, Gary's mother, Navia, Haley, Nick, Ryan, Leo, Marshall, Ron and Ginger, Shorty, Tom and Sue Ann, Tim, Judith, Ruth, Blake, Cody, Janet, Carrie, Bob, Brenda, and Mark, and Brad. Are there others that we would name? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Sir. Paul and Laura. Teachers and educators, students that are going to be headed back. Um, I know a lot of college students are about to head back, so we'll, we'll, we'll add them to our prayers. Sharon. Sarah. Sarah. Patty. I'd like to also, we want to call to mind the people we cannot name, whose names we don't know, but we know they need our prayers and God's comfort. For those that have lost, lost loved ones, for those who are sick and recovering, for those who are caring for the loved ones who are sick and at home, for those who are caring for persons in medical care, for those who are separated from their loved ones, for those who are feeling alone and isolated, for those who are helping and are so very tired, for those who are struggling to find friends, food, and comfort, for those who are afraid, and for those of acts of injustice and, pre and oppression, and for peace. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this glorious day that we may come together and share with one another your good word. We ask that we, you be with those that we've named here this morning and those that we have not named, those whom you know need comfort and care. We ask that you be with them, to give them strength, to give them peace as we walk through these times, these difficult times, knowing that you are with us, knowing that you are there to provide us strength, to provide us love, to provide us hope, to provide us peace. We ask that you continue to bless those in this congregation and, and those in this community. And we ask that you help us, Lord, be better disciples of your word as we move about our week. We ask that you remind us of the words you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now hear this benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Amen.